I wish I had learned this truth many years ago. Be thankful for the days, good and bad. All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And today, I have another amazing warrior, and I'll introduce her to you in just a second, but let me remind you of why you're here. Success is a journey, it's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are all part of making us who we are up to this point, and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie, as well as those zombies in our world. And in each episode, I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, literally any inspired leader that has a story to tell. These warriors have a cause. They have unique value and a vision that goes generations into the future. And today's guest is absolutely no exception. Katrina Sawa is an awesome warrior. She's a wife, mom, and CEO and founder of jumpstartyourbiznow.com. Her unique vision and value is to kick her clients into high gear, empowering them to make more money doing what they love and fast. She is a creator of the Jumpstart Your Marketing and Sales System. She's a 12-time international best-selling author with 20 books, including Love Yourself Successful, Jumpstart Your New Business Now, and the Jumpstart Your Blank series. Katrina is also a CEO of Jumpstart Publishing and founder of the International Speaker Network. She has been a featured on Oprah and Friends, XM Radio Network, ABC, and The CW. She was awarded the National Collaborator of the Year Award by Public Speakers Association and is a two-time nominee for the Wise Woman Award by the National Association of Women and Business Owners. Okay, Katrina Sawa, welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie. How are things on your side of the country today? <laughs> <laughs> They're cold, but good. It's all good. Thanks for having me, Dave. Well, what does cold sound like? Uh, tell, I know you're. I know you're in California, so because of the time difference. But what does cold look like to you there? Cold here is anything fifty or below, fifty-five or below, really. <laughs> yeah. For us in California, well, sixty degrees. I have to be in the sun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you there. I um, I moved here from Michigan. I was a, grew up in Kansas City, which is warmer, and now in Dallas. I'm I'm not I'm done with you know the heavy duty winter. So yeah, you it's just get lots of different weather changes. You guys get snow and you know really hot heat and humidity. It's crazy. Yeah, so. uh, summers are can be a, a little oppressive at times. So yeah, you are exactly right there. There's the, the I think with the ocean there, you guys have a little more uh, moderation, I think, in terms of temperature fluctuations. But yeah, it's chilly here today. I think it's in the 40s, maybe 50s here. So I would say we probably feel the same way about it. It's it's cold. So no, no immediate challenges. I know uh, as we were getting started, there was some allergy stuff going on and that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah. you know, you're a warrior. I already know that. So you're powering through all that kind of stuff. Power right? through the the sneezing, the coughing. You just meet yourself and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I love about this is I love talking to warriors. Uh, we've just started to get to know each other. I know we're going to have a, a mastermind in a few weeks in, in March. Um, I think four weeks from tomorrow, actually. Yeah. Uh, and so for those listening to this, uh, you'll have an, another bite at the apple or whatever to talk, to hear some of Katrina's brilliance. But uh, let's do this. I want to take a quick break. Uh, for the audio audience, you'll hear a little of our theme song, It's Not the Getting There by Ricky Jean Wright. And we'll be back to hear your story, how you got to where you are today uh, from Katrina Solwe. But the miles become the teacher While the student learns real slow Traveling blind most of the time Wherever you go 
It's not the getting there. Right. Quick check in, Katrina. It's the journey. Power every day. Stuff today. It's so not tell me, as I said before, the, our quick break. How, how did you get from where you started to where you are today? One day you well, way back. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've always been in sales and marketing positions. I never thought that I would have my own business, although it was interesting. Like when I graduated college. I was still a bartender and I'm like, well, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> Took a couple jobs and in the sales and marketing arena, <clears throat> one of them was advertising sales for the local newspaper and here in Sacramento. And um, I love talking to the small business owners that I would go around and try to sell them ads into the paper. And I, I would find them in chaos with all the things they're trying to do and not getting the business they needed and not following through on a lot of the things, you know, internally. And so I would consult with them on all these other things that they needed to be doing to really not go out of business, right? And so, because they would go out of business left and right. So that's where I really found the love of small business owners. And I realized, wow, I know a lot more than I think I do. And so that's, and I created a lot of connections through the local networking that I did. Most of the ad reps for the paper never went to networking events. They would just knock on doors and do sales calls. And I would get into the community and really get active. So I was more known. And so that was my first um, experience with really being visible and just showing up and getting to know a lot of people and then them getting to know me. And then I was the known person, right? So that's just, I mean, I think this particular community that we're in here is gets it right and so networking and follow-up really good follow-up is what got me started into my own business which you know then blossomed from there it's been almost 21 years wow. <laughs> so the 21 year journey um it, so if i get this right so you started out really in the sales was this like commission only sales kind of yeah uh, so you were working for a company, but you didn't have a guaranteed paycheck. Well, I so. had a base. I had a oh, very okay. small base. And it's funny because <laughs> I was like, oh, thank for the base. And I was always worried about making money, but I was always top in sales, but I was still always worried. And the radio station tried to steal me away a couple times locally to sell radio ads, but they were really commission only, like no base. And I'm like, oh no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, when you're in your own business, you're completely... <laughs> Like you have no uh, marketing department, no support, yeah. nothing. You're it. <laughs> so so. Yeah, you're, there's no safety net there, right? You're no. you're it's you're it's it. it's all uh, all performance, right? Yeah. So so you started out. Yeah, you know, unlike you know myself, I was in the corporate world for you know a long time and worked with large corporations and did you know all these and even though um, it was still performance you know, you did get a paycheck and, and those kinds of things. So you've lived with the kind of the entrepreneur's journey along the way. What would you say along that path are the, your, the biggest zombies you've encountered along the way? Um, obviously, uh, you're in Sacramento, you've got things, you started in a commission, relatively commission only type of thing, and you've worked your way through. Now you're business owner, author, all those things. And I know. So tell me about that a little bit. How, what, what did you have to overcome in that? Well, um, I think overcoming what I didn't know, I didn't know, first of all, because I didn't have any dream of being an author back then. I thought, why would I sell a $20 book when I can sell a $200 thing, a $2,000 thing or a $20,000 thing? So I didn't have any aspirations of being an author then. Um, I also didn't in the beginning for the first three years, I had no idea that I could get clients all over the place. No idea. You just don't know what you don't know until you know. Right. And so, and then one of my friends, uh, invited me to go to a workshop, which was in LA and I would have had to, I had to fly, I had to get a hotel and I had to pay for the $3,000 workshop at the time. I'm like, I don't have the money for that, but I got to figure it out. So I had to move money around to go do it. And that's what opened my eyes to all the other stuff that was possible. And I'm like, so thankful that I charged the heck out of that trip <laughs> to go because that was the beginning of learning all the stuff I needed to do in order to not only hit six figures, but multiple six figures. Now it still took me six years, six years to get to six figures 
because I was stubborn. I didn't. So ego was a zombie, a stubbornness, thinking I knew better than the coaches that I was paying. Don't do that. Right. And so that was one of the biggest things in the beginning that I think prolonged my success for sure. <laughs> and then yeah, there I, a few I, other things, but yeah, I, I would say that I have that same challenge myself. I think as warriors, <laughs> um, one of the biggest things I had to learn was if you're going to be a coach, if you're going to be uh, somebody who's advising other people, you need to have your own coaches too. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. even though I listen to warriors every, every week, multiple times, you know, I learn something every, every time I take the time to listen. And, um, but sometimes that ego gets in the way that I know better. Um, I had tried that once and it didn't work, you know, all of those things, right? There's a whole list of head trash that we can throw into there, right? For sure. Head trash. The other thing that really got me, kept me a little bit stuck was my starter husband. So <laughs> I, I know I call him my starter husband. I on. love it. No, I use it too. I have, I, I, my, my wife is of 35 years now, but I had two starter wives. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm slower than you are, so I, uh, you know, but <laughs> I'm I have and now yeah. a keeper. Yes, and um, <laughs> back then, what, when I started my business, I was married to that person, and he was really money scarcity minded, and so mm. I, as an entrepreneur, have a little bit more of a risk uh, mindset, right? So I'll like, oh, I'll jump in and do this. I'll jump in and do that. I'll jump in and do this. And so he was always nervous about bringing in money. And of course, I was on the roller coaster of cash flow, you know, for a few years. But he was always scared. Well, maybe you should go back and get a job and, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, no, this is what I meant to do. I just got to figure it out oh, and, and or learn what I need to do to make more money. And eventually I did. But I had to have that faith in myself. Mm -hmm. And I also I did end up leaving that marriage after two years um, of being in business, two, three years, I think, because we just weren't connecting anymore. He wasn't interested in supporting what I was trying to do, didn't understand it, want to understand it. So I had to let the marriage go. So that was a big part of my journey because it was scary. It was scary to leave not only the marriage, but the second income in the household, right? Uh, because I wasn't happy. A lot of people stay when they're not happy or feeling loved or feeling supported. And I was like, I was 35 years old at the time. And I was like, I don't want to be unhappy and unsupported for another 20, 30 years. Like I deserve more. So I left and, um, you know, I had about how many years, uh, seven years of online dating craziness. I have a lot of stories for that <laughs> and how that fit into, you know, really building the business. But I had to do some work on myself. In the beginning, I thought, oh, it was all him. But then I went to some relationship workshops and I'm like, oh, I played a part in this <laughs> too. So I had to really learn about myself. And the more I learned about myself, the more my business grew. Yeah. So I talk about the love side of your life and the money side of your life because they have to go hand in hand and flow together. And so there's a lot. You have to look at that. If you're hiding your head in the sand about the, a bad relationship or an unsupportive spouse or loved one, or you don't have somebody and you want somebody, but you don't feel like you can spend the time on it. Oh, please do. Mm -hmm. Please do spend the time on the love side of your life because it will greatly increase your money for sure. So I, I, so um, there's several zombies and several things that you've, you've, you've highlighted there for our listeners. And if they've listened to us much, they'll, they'll, they'll get this. But one of the things is who you surround yourself with. And obviously in your uh, marital relationship or, you know, your, your day-to-day -day life, um, the importance of having people surround you that are supporting you on your journey um, they don't have to be on the same journey but they have to be a lot as I say aligned you need to be aligned in a way with people that are going down the thing now everybody has different um, values I mean a team is a team I mean 
yeah. if I were, you're not just, I'm sure your, your current husband, um, I'm sure you're supportive of each other. You fill in each other's gaps, those kinds of things. The other thing you said, which again is kind of relates to it as well is the whole, whole having coaches and listening to people. And the other thing you said, which again is a, a major zombie for people is that scarcity mindset. I do a talk called the miracle of margin and it really is. You have to be able to make the right decisions in a spirit of abundance, not saying frivolous, not saying not being aware yeah. of the finances, but sometimes it's, it's just yeah. a matter of not saying I can't afford it. Instead of you say, how, how can, can I afford this? How can I afford a new website? How can I afford this assistant that I desperately need because I don't know how to do blankety blank? How right. can I afford a coach so that they can open my eyes to what else is possible? And then, I mean, as an entrepreneur, we have unlimited money-making abilities. Unlimited. You can make as much money as you want. You're just, you're most people are self-sabotaging themselves and they're holding themselves back from many things. It's either the energy, what they're putting out there in the world or um, how many people they're getting in front of because it's, you have to get in front of thousands of people every month, thousands, not just a couple handfuls. That's not enough people because they're not paying attention. A very small percentage of people that, that you think you're getting in front of are actually paying attention. So it's a much biggest, bigger process than, than you think for sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think um, it's interesting because you learned early on, you meant, made mention in your story about uh, going to networking events and building intentional relationships and those kinds of things that a lot of people that get into the sales space or they want to sell their product or service um, they want to skip that. They want to get to just, okay, here's the pitch. Here's the product. You want to buy it or not next. And they move on. And that's unfortunately, I really think a lot of sales coaches do their clients a disservice by not emphasizing however you do it in whatever platform or media area you do it in. Um, whether it's a book, whether it's a podcast, whether it's, however you're getting your message out there, um, that it is a relationship and you're trying to build a relationship of trust. You know, the, the common thing is people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Well, yes, but really they don't really, most cases don't do business until they trust you. And yeah. so it's getting, that's a journey. That's not, you know, a one shot thing. You might get lucky. They might, thousands of people may know you, but whether they do business with you, it becomes another thing, which is kind of what you, I mean, I think that's what I took away from what you were saying there. So any other challenges? Um, then we'll move on to, yeah, I know you're probably dying to uh, get into, you know, some of the things you're doing today and where that's you're okay. focused. No, I mean, any, there, other, there, any other things that you, the other challenge that I think so many people face is life happens, right? Mm. Like you're going along, everything's great. And then bam, something hits your family, your health, uh, somebody in your family. And it takes you out for weeks because of grief or loss or pain or, you know, so like three, three weeks after my current husband proposed, we thought we were getting married that year. Nope. He got diagnosed with cancer. Oh, man. Right. So we had to go through eight weeks of chemo and then a year of recovery, had five surgeries. Um, and he's here to tell, you know, that he's okay now, but, oh. um, that set us back a whole year and it was scary as heck. And it's like, it was like, no, I just found you. You're not going anywhere. Right. And so that took a lot of my energy and time. And thankfully, at that stage in my business, I already had a lot of systems in place and I had a couple team members. So they were able to pick up the slack. I didn't lose any money during that time. I still had money coming in because I had payment plans and different things that were going on. So a lot of people though, don't, aren't set up for that kind of thing to happen and pull them out of their business. Mm -hmm. Right. And I even have clients who can't, couldn't even take a vacation with, because they were the one, they were the money generator. And if they stopped working for a week or two weeks, then they would lose thousands of dollars. 
which would impact paying their bills. And so you have to get your business set up the right way right now, if not from the start, whenever you're hearing this, because if you don't have the systems and, and a light team, at least you're going to be up, you know, what Creek, if something <laughs> happens in your life and something takes you out. Yeah. And that's so brilliant. And for the audience uh, that, that listens to this podcast, there's a ton of entrepreneurs and small business owners um, that some of which have been in business for a long, long time. And like you say, the life happens, things, um, you just need to build that. And then at some point you want to exit, right? You want to move. Uh, Possibly. Not everybody well, wants to exit, but yes, some people do. And well, I have some clients that want to exit and now they can't because it's so wrapped around them. Yeah. And so there's a, again, back to, the discussion of coaches and ego and there's just so many things that that you can do as a warrior uh and you need a a wing woman or a wing man you need somebody along there somebody else that that's there that can pick up the slack and you need like you said systems uh things that uh diversify uh, how your business comes in so that it's not all you trading your hours for revenue or, you know, new clients yep. or whatever. And don't get me wrong. I still do a lot of one-on-one mm -hmm. and I have a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, but I can take a two-week vacation and my clients can just talk to me before or after. So yeah. you just have to set those boundaries and expectations ahead of time. Some people worry. It's like, oh, I can't leave because I have a weekly client call. Well, Tell them we're taking a vacation. They will probably praise you and be excited for you instead of be worried that they can't talk to you for a week, for God's sakes. You know, it's just crazy how we get in our own head about what we think other people will think and yeah. or what we think other people can afford or will pay for. Or if they have money, I can't even tell you how many people I've talked to that say, oh, well, I was talking to this person and it didn't seem like they have any money. Or I know they don't have any money. How do you know they don't have any money? How do you know that their husband doesn't have a huge, you know, 400,000 401k that they can pull out from or savings? Or how do you know that they don't have a rental property that's bringing them extra? You don't know. Stop prejudging and pre thinking about all these other things that you have no idea of the case. You just need to make your offers, be who you are, and you'll attract the right kind of clients. Enough of them, ideally, if you're talking to enough people. Love it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. Well, let's do this. I, I really want to get into, we're kind of talking about some of the your secret sauce and some of your learnings. And one of the things I always love about Warriors is as we learn things along the road, we take those and we want to share those with our clients. We want to lead them without making the same mistakes we made or whatever it might be. And so I can tell that you're you're full of that energy and wanting to do that. So let's take another quick break and then we'll come into the next segment where we can talk about, you know, your cause, why you're doing what you're doing, the value and the impact you want to have. So let's take hear a little more of Ricky Jean Wright and our theme song, It's Not the Getting There. And we'll be right back with Katrina Sawa and Warrior versus Zombie. It's not a race to see How many people know your name One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold It's not the getting there When you get there you'll know Funny how wisdom and youth. All right, Katrina. Okay, so I know you're not a feeling 100%, but your energy level is really good. So, uh, so tell me, why are you doing what you're doing today? What is it that you're hoping to uh, value, want to add, and that kind of thing? I'm already hearing a lot of it. So, share with me your perspective. Well, today, I mean, I love. I hate seeing people go out of business, first of all, and or go back and get a job after they start their own dream business, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to help them figure out how to make more money, like faster, because they, you can build a business, a profitable business about around almost anything, almost anything these days. And I usually can tell, I'm very intuitive when someone says, oh, I have this idea for a business, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that's probably not going to make you a lot of money. 
is that your goal? <laughs> like, do you want to replace your, like, maybe we could add this, this, or this to that and do, maybe that could be your give back or whatever. So, um, making money for people so they can have their happy, it's really comes down to them living their happiest life ever and me living my happiest life ever. It's all about happiness and love really. And, and in order to do that, we have to be doing what we love with people around us that, that love us and that we love and being fulfilled. And so in order to do that, you got to make more money. You got to mm. focus on the money. I mean, it's not the only thing, but it's hard to be happy eating top ramen. Let's face it. Right. So let's make some, let's make some money and really focus on the money so that you can also focus on the things that you want to create your happiest life ever. That's the why. So when you look at, I mean, you've written, you've got a number of books out there. Um, you're doing, you say one-to-one -one coaching, you're doing a number of things. Um, you're on this podcast. So what kind of impact, uh, if anything were possible, and oh, by the way, I believe everything is possible. <laughs> so is what I always say. But um, if anything were possible, what kind of impact or what, what are you, you know, are you looking for millions, you change? What, what, what's, your, what's your vision there? Well, it's funny because I had a coach one time that said my goals were too low and you need to, you need to want to make millions and millions of dollars. And the, the more I talked to people who said that, the more I was like, I don't need millions of dollars. Would that be nice if it was easier? Sure. And I think it's, it really is a numbers game. The people that I know that are making millions of dollars have anywhere from 20 to 50,000 people on their email list that are, and when you have that kind of numbers, you just have more people paying attention and buying. That's it, period. Mm -hmm. So that's what has to happen. And I tell you, I've been at this game for 20, almost 21 years and I don't even have that near. I've had to clean my list a couple of times because of the software I've gotten in and it's frustrating as all hell. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> to try to get more. And then you're on these podcasts and you're speaking and you're networking and it still doesn't grow as fast as you want. So I get the challenges with that. So then you have to look at the pricing, the packaging, because I can't, 98% of the people that I talk to are charged, are not charging enough in okay. order to hit their money goals. So there's so much, I mean, <laughs> that we need to focus on. There's, I talk about five P's that you need to focus on the pricing, the packaging, the positioning. What do you look like online? Right. What do you look right. like in person? What do you look like? Do you look like the expert with lots of credibility and then <clears throat> the promoting and the profiting. A lot of times people are making money, but they're not making profit because they've, they haven't streamlined their systems, their team, their, their, their expenses. There's so many things to look at. It's, I have a joke video on YouTube called the 462 things you need to do to master as an entrepreneur, <laughs> but it's not really a joke, is it? No. Mm. <laughs> Yes, I understand. And the thing is, it can become very paralyzing for a lot of the entrepreneurs that that we encounter, right? Is is what should I do becomes the the obstacle to doing something is to getting in motion. That's the equation for getting in your head, which you mentioned earlier about I got in my head and so on. So so as far as your, um, you know, jumpstart your biz now and stuff, it sounds like you're focused at, and your value or where you're, you're focusing in on is, you know, getting started right away, getting, getting impact. Is that correct? Is that, is that it's, your. It's laser focusing on where the holes and the opportunities in your business. So whether you're just starting or you're five years in or you're 20 years in, there are always holes and opportunities, holes to fill so that you're not losing money through inefficient systems or uh, the marketing is not working or something like that, or you're working too hard and you don't have enough team uh, or your websites needs updated. There's a lot of things that can you know, make it so you're not making the kind of money that you want to be making. So I would... So we have to fill the holes, then we have to take advantage of the opportunities. A lot of times people are like, 
well, I'm in all these groups, but you're not really maximizing the groups. You're not mm. putting the blog posts out. You're not doing the, the podcast interviews. You're not speaking on the stages or even asking to be speaking on the stages because you're too busy. So there's lots of things that you can take advantage of. Many are free or low cost mm -hmm. that you just probably aren't seeing because you're so looking like this and you're, you need to open up a little bit to what's possible. I love that. Um, the one thing I, I want to, I'm going to ask you this question because I like the 462 things you have to do to be an entrepreneur or that, or whatever you're, I'm going to have to go find that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but do. the other, but the other part of it is, so you, you said your approach, you're finding the, the gaps or the holes. And I, I get that. What, what would you say when you're talking to entrepreneur, entrepreneurs of all shapes and sizes uh, in doing this for 21 years, what would you say is the biggest obstacle or hole that people you encounter in terms of when you're working with your clients or networking or whatever? I mean, most people I work with are solopreneurs. Some have a couple assistants um, and might have a team. A couple, few people I work with are brick and mortars and they have employees and all mm -hmm. that. I like a variety of type of client because it lets me t take ideas from, say, the flooring company and give it to a coach or vice versa, right? And so it's really eye-opening to the people who say, uh, oh, we don't do that in our industry, right? And that's when they, no, like, stop it. And there's so many different possibilities. Um, and I forgot the question because I went down that road. Well, the, qu the question is the, the biggest gap that you, you say, filling yeah. gaps and stuff. Uh, oh, I'm sure there's a lot of them. I, and I'm just, I've just. Probably you know, the awareness of what else is possible, right? They don't know what they don't know. And they're not asking for what do you see that I don't see. That's the right. thing. That's what happened to me. It's like I was going along at about 70000 a year in the local business um, for in my local area before I knew I could get clients all over the world mm -hmm. and do things over the phone instead of in person or do it for them and, or just teach them how to do it instead of doing it for them. Right. Which I used to do in the marketing side of it all. And I just didn't know. So that mm -hmm. awareness of what else I could do, what else I could charge for, how, how much more I could charge and people could actually pay me. I think at the time I was only, um, maybe $75 an hour. And then I went to this workshop and I thought, saw people charging 500 or a thousand. I'm like, Oh my God, like, Oh my God. So I like went immediately to like 250 an hour. That's as much as I can say without stuttering at the time, went mm -hmm. back to the workshop like six months later and went to like, probably, I don't remember how I got from 250 to 500 an hour, but now I'm even more. Mm -hmm. right? It's about a confidence level. So what's stopping you is your confidence, your awareness of what's possible. You're knowing, you know, not knowing what you don't know. So you have to ask and get other people to look in on what you're doing and show you some things that you just don't know and don't see. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do this. I, I, I think we could go for a long time. I'm looking forward to having you back to do a mastermind with us around some of this stuff uh, in a, in a, few weeks but uh let's land the plane for this segment and we'll hear a little more ricky gene right and then we'll be back with what i call the land the plane segment and then i want to uh hear what is the major thing you want to make sure we take away so let's hear a little more of ricky gene right we'll be right back with katrina sala and warrior versus zombie funny how wisdom and youth are always two different games The years flew by so fast Is the common human complaint The memories in our minds Turn to diamonds in our soul And by the grace of God On down All right. the road Katrina, it's still, the energy's still there. I'm loving it. Um, so tell me, uh, as I said before, we took the quick break. If we take away anything from this, your story, this discussion, the even where we just were, what would you want to make sure that we don't miss? I would ask questions, right? Ask questions 
and ask questions of people, peers, other people in your industry. Say, what do you like? Take a look at my website. What do you see that's missing that I don't see? Or just whatever. Like, please ask. Don't be shy. Don't think it's going to make you look too vulnerable or um, not an expert. I think it's it makes you look good because mm -hmm. it makes you look like you're trying to improve and you're getting better and working on yourself. So that's what I would say. I love it. Actually, I'm no matter how far we get down the road, that's one of the things that I've learned. And that's why we do now the mastermind format, which we've been doing this for like eight years, but it's more of a dialogue, a question and answer format for that very reason is, mm -hmm. is that it's easy to listen to a talk or listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video or whatever, or read a book and say, okay, yeah, okay, I get that. I understand that. It's another, quite another thing to say, okay, what am I not doing? What, what is it that I'm not applying? Um, asking the right questions. Randy Sablick, who you'll meet uh, on the uh, mastermind, he, I always say he's, an, he never, he doesn't necessarily have all the answers, but he has questions. And that's what he, as a CEO and working with companies and turning around, that was kind of the, the, his secret sauce is just, I don't know the answers, but I know what questions to ask and leave exactly. somebody down that. And that's such a powerful, such a powerful warrior nugget that you shared. Well, Katrina, uh, like I said, we could go a long time, but I want to know how can our, I, you are on the Be Connected platform. This will be up in replay. It'll be on the YouTube channel. It'll be out on all the podcasting platforms. Uh, so however we they find us, what's the best way to follow up with you after they've share or enjoy this podcast? Well, you can reach out on my website, also on any social media platform, but just make sure if you send me a connection or a friend request, you send a private message. Please always do that to people because mm -hmm. we don't know how you know us and we may not add you unless you say, oh, I saw the interview on Warrior Networking. So like that's number one. Um, if you want more trainings, I have a lot of free trainings on my website. So you just go to jumpstartyourbiznow.com forward slash free trainings. There's a quiz there. It's a really good quiz. It talks about the five areas that I spoke about, pricing, packaging, all that, and seeing where you're missing. So it mm. asks you these questions and you'll know by, oh, I'm a one there. And those are the things you need to work on. So the quiz is really good. Um, there's a couple webinars there that walk through a lot of ways to make more money. So yeah, I would go Beautiful. there. Love it. Yeah. And it's pretty straightforward. So jumpstartyourbiznow.com. And um, I'll have, by the way, the links and stuff in the show notes, both on all the platforms. So hopefully they'll be able to find you. And so thank you so much, Katrina. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for getting up early on the left coast and, and joining us today from Sacramento. I appreciate that. Uh, but I thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, it's been a great journey. We'll be back next week with another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And oh, by the way, Katrina, um, I'm starting a new podcast called Triggered by Warrior vs. Zombie, where uh, it's you're already your stories out there. But when I get things like what you're talking about and they and they trigger me to want to dig deeper, uh, we are doing going to start doing episodes on the things that like we've talked about today in a little deeper dive. And so I uh, may invite you back for that. So again, thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you in March for our mastermind. And until then, for the audience, we'll be back next Thursday for another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. Here are the final outro of It's Not the Getting There. And we'll be back next week. It's not the getting there. It's the journey every day. It's not a race to see how many people know your name. One day you realize time was worth more than the gold. It's not the getting there. When you get there, you'll know. One day you realize Time was worth more than the gold 
It's not the getting there When you get there, you'll know